when we talk about Palm Beach and the ghosts of Palm Beach, we have to start at Flagler's house because after all, he was the one that actually made this place the way it is right now. So let's go. We are going to the Flagler's Museum slash Henry Flagler's house. It was actually a wedding gift. Standard oil tycoon and the railroad visionary Henry Morrison Flagler. The man who changed Florida and Palm Beach forever. Today I'm going to visit White Hole, Henry Flagler's Gilded Age estate in Palm Beach, also known as Flagler Museum. This mansion was built as a wedding present for his third wife, Mary Lily Cannon Flagler. The couple used the home as a winter retreat from 1902 until Flagler's death in 1913, establishing the Palm Beach season for the wealthy of the Gilded Age. This is the place where Flagler fell down a flight of marble stairs and died of complications due to the fall later. But the key word here is, allegedly fell. Let's get ready for a very strange story. You know how they say that every haunted place is haunted because the ghosts have an unfinished business. I really think that the ghosts of Whitehall are trying to tell us something and make us resolve more than a hundred year old alleged murder mystery. So I'm going to try to summarize this story in my own words because it gets really crazy. But to start off, we have to tell you the story about Flagler's three wives. So the first wife of Henry was Mary Harkness Flagler. She was described as gentle and modest. She was actually the mother of his three children. She was also the reason why he went to Florida because she was very ill and he was told that if he goes to like a warmer climate, she will get better. But unfortunately, she passed away. And after that, Henry decided to marry her nurse, Ida Alice Shorts. Ida Alice, who her husband referred to as Alicia, was a colorful, attractive woman who was a lot younger than the wealthy Mr. Flagler. But Ida Alice was admitted to the hospital after being diagnosed as incurably crazy. Flagler then married Mary Lil Cannon after obtaining a divorce. But talking about Mary Lily, apparently they were having an affair while he was still married to Ida. And some say that the niece, they talk about it, the niece who inherited a lot of his estate, was actually a child of Mary and Henry that happened while he was still married to Ida. So it's pretty, pretty complicated, the whole story to understand. So talking about Mary... When Flagler passed away in 1913, she remained by his side and received his substantial estate. But following Flagler's passing in 1913, Mary Lily picked up her earlier relationship with Robert Ward Bingham of Louisville, Kentucky. For me, this is the most suspicious person in this whole story. In November 1916, they got married. Mary Lily felt sicker and sicker alone in a new city. According to Stuart McCulver, author of Murder in the Tropics, her husband's doctor gave her enough morphine to create an addiction, which was an important leverage for Bingham's plan to keep her completely pacified until she agreed to add his name to her will. After just eight months of marriage, she unexpectedly passed away after fainting in her bathtub going through seizures. She was later quickly exhumed at midnight, no less, for a covert autopsy, the findings of which are still unknown. 
Okay, so now that you have a summary of the story and I hope you can understand who the main characters are and what's going on, let's walk around the house a little bit and then we're gonna go back because, you know, this story, it's, there's so many other crazy details and I feel we are onto something here and maybe, you know, you can give me some suggestions who you think the suspect is because it, it is very strange, you know, no one says it was actually a murder, but... Um, the details are pretty strange. I mean, the whole story is strange, and I'm just very surprised that no one is really talking about... I know it's been 100 years, but still, I think these people, they need some answers. He actually died in this house. They say he slipped down the marble staircase, but I did ask, and they say it might be true or not. Some say he slipped on the rug, or maybe it was the young wife. We don't know. They say that you can still hear his footsteps walking around the rooms, but he is most seen in his office, which is the library. So we're gonna go there now. So let's go check out the library, and I'm gonna try to find the staircase as well. I think I kind of understood where it is, so let's go. Okay, guys, I think I found the library. So that's where they say the ghost of Henry Flagler hangs around because it used to be his office, his reception area. Let me show you guys, it's actually pretty cool. It's right at the entrance. There are several tales about how the ghost of Henry Flagler wants to be noticed, with the most frequent reports of his presence coming from the vicinity of where his offices once stood. He was known to spend tremendous amounts of time in his office, and it seems even after his death, he's not prepared to let it go. The room you're seeing right now, it's the library, also used by Flagler as a reception area for guests and business associates. And it was decorated by Potier and Stimus in the Italian Renaissance style. Artisans molded and painted the library's cast plaster and fabric ceiling to look like wood beams with leather insets. Dries practice is one of many examples of the old world craftsmanship melding with turn of the century technology which made it possible for craftsmen to complete Whitehall in only 18 months. There were rumors of seeing his ghost in the space as well as reports of the lights dimming on their own as if they were running low on power. Other sightings of this location include footsteps coming from the hallways and rooms that are believed to be empty. Orbs are frequently seen here, especially in the dining room and kitchen. Was this the staircase he fell on? I mean, there's a lot of stairs, so I can see this coming, how it can be fatal. It's like a lot of stairs, and it's pretty slippery. There's two sides of it. Look at that. I'm going to try to count the stairs, so we'll see. But, you know, when I asked here, they say it's not really sure that he slipped on a staircase. They say he might be on a rug. And here's your friend. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to see the rest. But look at this staircase, guys. Lots of stairs. To be honest with you, I would be like scared to wake up and like imagine <laughs> getting drunk and going down the staircase yeah it's beautiful but definitely scary okay let's explore so these are the rooms guys this is the colonial chamber where some of the most important guests stayed and I think this is my favorite. The green room. You guys know how much I love green. 
Look how pretty it is. <laughs> this was another guest room, actually. And you can see all the fashionable trends during the Victorian era. I just hope it's not the green, you know, the one I had or scenic. Let's see the rest. Okay. And apparently, yeah, I can see how the ghosts will be a good place for ghosts. Oh, this is really nice. Walk-in closet, I guess, with luggage storage. I like it. Heliotrope room. Beautiful rooms. Here is your friend as usual. <laughs> I really love the ceilings everywhere. Okay, let's see guys. Let's see the rest. The gold room. I am definitely too tall for this bed. <laughs> like look at this guys. I mean, on the video it looks big, but I think it's like for a person that's like maximum 5'5". Five, five. But I do want to find the master bedroom. Louis XV room. I really want to find the master bedroom to see where the real ghosts are at. They even say like in the guest rooms, there are like ghosts of guests walking around the night. Okay, and now I can't decide which one is my favorite room. Because there's a green room, but there's a pink room as well. So pretty. And that bed is really cute. But now we have to find the master bedroom. I mean, it has to be somewhere here. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, I love the wallpapers. Oh, wow. There's a yellow room and it's the master bedroom suite and it's so beautiful. Let's go. Mr. and Mrs. Flagler actually shared the master suite, which was a practice very uncommon at the turn of the century. Okay, so this is a bathroom and it had all the modern appliances, including the telephone I'm trying to find it where it is oh okay here it is guys look at that amazing that must be a telephone yeah look at these shoes guys is this for kids okay beautiful I actually like that the closets have gloss. This is what I need. Oh, how cute. I don't know why, but out of all the rooms, I feel like this is the room where ghosts live or go to sleep if they ever do. I don't know, it's just like, it gives me that vibe. What do you guys think? Out of all these rooms, where do you think the ghosts are? So this one is made in Art Nouveau style. Pretty. And this is the colonial room. So how many rooms are there here? Like six or seven? If you think about it, it's like such a huge house. There are not as many rooms. Wow, this is a very nice room as well. It's called Yellow Roses Room. The wallpaper and fabrics for this guest room are patterned with Marshall Neil Roses, a popular decorating theme at the time. So this room was created specifically for Mary Lily Flagler. It's a small private sitting room. She retired to this room to practice music and to write her correspondence. Oh, I love this room. We have seen all the 
lavish and beautiful guest rooms and master bedroom. Let's see where servants slept. So this here is servant's room. Originally there were 12 servant's room on this floor and additional rooms on the third floor. Some say that there is apparently another staircase underneath this one. We cannot see right now, but some say that's the staircase. Apparently we don't know. We'll never know. And the staircase is behind these doors. So now that we have seen the inside, let's go check out a little bit outside. It's a beautiful day, with as usual, but yeah, if I don't fly away, you're going to see the rest of everything. <laughs> so I'm walking around. I have to tell you something guys, ever since I've been in Palm Beach, it's literally been there every day. Which is not bad when it's like warm, but in terms of shooting videos and stuff outdoors, it's really kind of hard. And I think that's the reason why my phone fell and I broke it, <laughs> but it's okay. Let's see what is here. Very nice. Henry Flagler was a true railroad visionary. By 1912, Flagler's Florida East Coast Railway and the luxury hotels he built along the way linked the entire east coast of Florida from Jacksonville to Key West. In so doing, Flagler established agriculture and tourism as Florida's leading industries and Palm Beach is one of the world's great winter resorts. What you see right here on the screen is Flagler's private rail car, rail car number 91. It was right in front of his house. And the more interesting story is, on January 21st, 1912, the Key West extension was complete and open for travel. Flagler left his home in West Palm Beach and traveled the 220 miles to Key West on his railroad. When he arrived on January 22nd, all of Key West was there to greet him. The 82-year-old had finally accomplished his dream. Sadly, today the Florida East Coast Railway operates 351 miles of track from Jacksonville to Miami. It runs along most of the same tracks as Flagler's original, but it is now a freight service train only. Passenger service was stopped in 1968. The Overseas Railroad no longer operates to Key West. It was destroyed in the Labor Day hurricane of 1935 which is sad because I really wish that I could just jump on a train from Palm Beach and go all the way to Key West. If you make a reservation, you can have a Gilded Age style tea service. It's until 3 p.m. and it's 34 US dollars per person. I came too late, so I missed it. I'm definitely gonna do it again. And this is the oceanfront view. I love it, so nice. There's a private dock as well. A beach. A bridge that's opening. <laughs> really lovely. 
But before I go, I still have to tell you a few things about Mary Lily. So after eight months of marriage, she unexpectedly passed away after fainting in her bathtub going through scissors. But the interesting thing here is her brother was a very close friend to her new husband. So if Mary Lily was alive, she might question whether her brother sealed that report, the autopsy report, in order to be a good boy and defend the family name. Or did the family pocket their gauntlet to cover a controversy given that she was dead? The Cannons received roughly $95 million. And Bingman was circulating blackmail? After reading the New York Times headline, Mrs. Bingham was drugged, Breathless Wags got into a new frenzy over lewd details and murder rumors. Another very interesting detail is that Bingman's wife committed suicide by jumping from an oncoming automobile at a railroad crossing in April 1913. Flagler passed away from fall-related complications three weeks later. His 46-year-old widow received around 100 million US dollars as well as placed at the standard oil table. Bingman's ward creditors urged that he go see his ex-girlfriend. Motivated, he followed her to Asheville and resumed their previous relationship. Ironically, they got married at the house of Pemensar Jones in New York City. Louise Weiss, who Mary Lilly had officially identified as a heir to the majority of the Flagler fortune, was her only companion. The lively Mrs. Bingham started to get chest symptoms all of a sudden. Dr. Leo Michael Ravitch, a dermatologist and Bingham's buddy, was enlisted instead of a heart specialist. According to Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and author David Chandler's book The Bingmans of Louisville, the grim history behind one of the America's great fortunes, they relocated Mary Lily to a motel where Ravitch treated her with routine morphine injections. Bingham's attorney and fellow Gimgo, William Davis, once supervised Mary Lily's signature, changing her will to leave $5 million to the judge upon her passing. According to McLeaver, Bingham escorted Mary Lily into his residence, where his visitor Ravage increased the dosage of morphine. She was given morphine even though she was unresponsive in the bathtub. Numerous traces of the opioid as well as of adrenaline and arsenic were found in her body. In newspapers, acute heart trouble was mentioned. Rumors suggested murder, complicity, her husband's reprehensible behavior and shouts of malpractice towards Ravage. One thing is for sure, there's a lot of suspicious details in this story and I would love to hear your theory in the comments and who do you think the main suspect is. And this, my friends, concludes our today's episode of Haunted Florida. Today we've been to Flagler's house slash Flagler's museum, but... There are many more ghosts in Palm Beach, guys. So there is more to come. Subscribe so you're going to get a notification. But just to give you a hint, our next stop is going to be one of the hotels made by Flagler. But we're going to see a few spots in our next episodes. I'm going to try to make most of them in one episode. So see you guys. Ciao, ciao.